This program is a forum for the mature discussion of human sexuality. It deals with discussions of explicit sexual conduct and terminology, which may not be suitable for all listeners. Let's take it from the caregiver's perspective of is, when is it okay to go from having the thoughts, which we'll just call is totally normal. In my, in my experience, in my, my view, that totally normal, totally common. So no one's out there telling people, wow, these thoughts you're having of, of wanting a relationship outside of my, my marriage when my spouse is, is completely disabled from advanced dementia, those thoughts are totally normal. Where does it become okay to act on those thoughts? I guess that's probably the first big question that comes up. And I think that's probably the biggest barrier to people actually pursuing these relationships. They have the thoughts, but very rarely do they go out and act upon it. I mean, how would you feel about meeting somebody whom you, you started a relationship with, a, a companion? Now? Yeah. Well, I, I just, I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for that. If it fell on my doorstep, I have a different feeling, maybe. But I'm not out there looking for that. I really want to spend as much time with him as I can, so that I don't have feelings of that I cheated him or I didn't do something. But in a sense, you're cheating yourself. Well, let's put it this way. If he went on for a long time, like he is now, then maybe I would be ready to, to have something companionship, someone to, to put their arm around me, someone to say they want to spend time with me, and they want to do things, and go out to dinner, and do things, go to a movie if that ever happens. Right. Yes, that, I miss that a lot, because Dad and I had that kind of a relationship. Right, so now it's left, left you in the lurch, a, a hole, in your, a gap in your life there. Yes. Yes, there is a big gap. So, um, you know, how, how can you possibly deal with that? That's going to have a lot of difficult repercussions. This isn't supposed to be emotional, is it? I don't see how it can't be. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to get the, the clean. I have some. Thank okay. you. I came prepared for your interview. Good, good. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate it. And, you know, it's helpful to others to know how somebody, because uh, many women share your your feelings and many men too well of course men do too but i'm human it's unmet needs right so what drives these thoughts in the first place is is unmet needs of some sort so life's passing me by whatever that means to somebody that's where the sexual needs come in right i mean i've seen people with a high sex drive at that age and that's a real real concern i mean that need is not being met and that's a, a real life need um what are your thoughts on, on what do you think how people should process that as, as maybe a non-medical person but a caregiving person? So for me, um, in order to be a healthy relationship and to thrive as an individual, you would have to have it in your mind as far as guilt and shame. You would have to come to terms with how you, is this going to make you feel guilty? Are you going to feel shame? My understanding of guilt is something that you did that you don't particularly agree with, you think you perhaps should not have done. And shame is something that you are that you don't agree with and it's going to affect your self-esteem. So I think you're going to have to probably step back, maybe contemplate what your core values are and see if this relationship is going to jeopardize those core values. You may want to have a mindset shift, perhaps experience seeing your relationship and who you think you are, your identity, in some various, various ways. Look at, at some alternative mindsets. How do you see yourself? And does any of, do any of those feel comfortable for you? Can you see yourself being happy and not feeling guilty and not feeling shame? And if you can, if you can own that and you can live with that and be happy, then perhaps you might want to move forward with that. I like those terms, so let, let's talk. I think that's the, whether they know it or not, that's the general steps that people progress without putting names to it, right? So you've done a nice job illustrating those names. But I think I would almost flip the first two is, I think someone first probably intrinsically takes a look at their core values 
Um, that's just how, how they process and think about things. So, you know, what, what comes to mind? Usually the core value there is someone like, I'm a loving, trusting person. I'm a faithful person. Um, you know, that type of thing. What, what comes to mind when you say core values? What would you put in there, do you think? What's very meaningful, um, loving, my, loving my spouse, being, uh, being loyal to my spouse. Loyal, right? Loyal, Loyal. loving. I've made a commitment. So let's, I think those are all words like commitment, loving, loyal. Um, Maybe there's a religious aspect. That's another big one, right? I mean, a huge barrier. So I think talking about reframing or or what in your eyes would be a way to, how would you approach that with like a a close relative, like your mom, for example, or as I can do clinical, but I, I love that you've, you're living the experience. So how would you do that as a, as a child of a parent in your situation? Well, I would probably, like I've already planted a few seeds by just sort of mentioning the idea to her. And then I try to listen and see if I'm hearing any buy-in on that. Is she starting to, to make those considerations? Do I see that those seeds are taking root? And and if I see that there's some talk about that, then I may help um, perpetuate that. And I would probably want to, to feel around and see, is there any sense of guilt or is there any sense of shame? Because I wouldn't want her to feel those, those extremely difficult feelings. And, and so I guess by, by helping her weigh out the, the differences, you can stay the way that you are. And I know one frustration is that she feels life is passing her by and that yeah. there's no guarantee for tomorrow. So that's creating a lot of anxiety and frustration for her, clearly. And so she could stay there or she could move forward with trying to, to you know, create a relationship. And I know that, that from her words, it's, um, saying something such as it's not so easy to meet people these days ah, <laughs> that tells me where her Hello, mind man. is wandering a bit yeah well how am i going to do this locally there's there's the nest the big pickup joint there's castellis there's mastros that's not my cup of tea and what about dating apps <laughs> online dating people do that well i'd be curious I would be curious, but the men that are, um, I don't want some old dude. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so that, you know, that's just, uh, I think it's a a horrible disease. I'm just thinking about the transformations. I'll tell you about a couple people. So these people were just, we're talking about, they, they were, their spouse, so I'll take a male, for example, one of the, the patients. There's not many left. 